Welcome to One Drink, a podcast where we talk about one topic for one drink. I'm Matthew. I'm Chad. Eric Wallace. And I'm Oliver. And we are on location at Iron Tug Brewery. Yes, sir. Yeah, Iron Tug Brewery. We're here on uh, Park Ave. Park Ave. Um, I'm glad that you are officially part of this. Thank you. Um, the Rochester area has a lot of breweries. Yes, we do. And it's good that you are a part of the scene. Yes. So what about, um, we tried some of the beers. Yeah. What do you think? I like them so far. I mean, I, I've had a few over the years, um, especially working at Quimby's, where I know yeah. Chad from. Um, but I've always liked them. So, and then I have... Lies. <laughs> Cut that out. <laughs> <laughs> whole point of the show is one drink. I <laughs> forgot mine. This is, what am I drinking? That is the pineapple upside down cake sour. It's delicious. <clears throat> I'm a big sour guy too. Pretty much anybody that knows the show that's listening to us talk about beer know that I, I love sours and this one's fantastic. You said you guys won an award? Yep. This, you this guys got all, first place? Yep, this was all Eric's uh, idea. Oh. He came up with this a great idea and uh, put it together. You want to tell him how we... Yeah, so this one we won a we won a competition out of Buffalo from a group called Buffalo Beer Geeks. They put it on every year. Basically, it's uh, last year was a little weird because of COVID, but we submitted this beer to the competition and won first place with it. Nice. Um, basically, awesome. it's just our base sour that we do you know most of our sour recipes with. Um, that we added pineapple puree, a little bit of cherry puree, <clears throat> and then uh, caramel sauce and vanilla wafer cookies. Nice. Wow. Um, my thought is when we're doing something. <laughs> You know, like this, we're trying to emulate a dessert rather than you know. I've had pineapple upside down beers before, and a lot of times it's like pineapple and like maybe a little bit of cherry. Mm-hmm. Uh, but my thought is like, if you're gonna call a pineapple upside down cake, make it, it taste like, like pineapple, pineapple upside down. down. Yep. So that's like the pineapple that's on top, the vanilla wafers for the cakey flavor, a mm-hmm. little bit of cherry for the cherries on top, and then I think of course one of the most important parts of pineapple upside down is when you flip it out of the pan. There's that kind of layer of caramelized sugar mm-hmm. on the top of it, um, so that's what we did the caramel sauce with. Nice. You can t- take this as a compliment. I used to make pineapple upside down shots when I was at the restaurant like, all the time. And they got real popular <laughs> yes, you did. for a long time. It was like a huge thing. <laughs> and uh, this very much reminds me of the way that that shot used to taste. Mm-hmm. And nice. I used to love those shots. So I nice. quite like this beer. Yeah. I'm glad you enjoyed it. I took a little vodka in this and boy, I'd be all set. It's dangerous. It's dangerous. <laughs> That's one of the things you do. A lot of the sours we have are, are easily mixed with ice and certain mm-hmm. things. So, yeah. 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 So. Tell us a little bit about how you guys got started in your individual roles within... I'll well, let you start because you've got well, a longer history than I do. So. <laughs> I mean, I've been involved in a lot of the local beer scene for over a decade, volunteer-wise. Um, I've only been with ITV now for almost two years. Uh, came on as, a, honestly, a part-time job uh, where I was helping out in the tap room. Um, quickly, we decided that we wanted to have a bigger role and knew that we could grow the business. So. The owners uh, let us run wild to be, and uh, here we are now on Park Ave, um, doing five times the amount of business we were three years ago, <laughs> and awesome. looking to expand to other areas in, in, in the city. That's awesome. Um, I love right. seeing you know little local guys, yeah, you know, yeah. make a splash in the yeah. world. It's so great. Yeah. yeah. Oh man. What's nice too with our our licensing is that we're able to now go and open up four other locations anywhere in New York State. Oh without right. asking anything. All we go is say, hey, I want that space, go and lease it, rent it, buy it, whatever you want to do, and that's just more business. That's awesome. Yep. Now, is that something in the future you guys are going to look into? Or? Potentially, oh, yeah, yeah, potentially. Yeah. We, um, when we were going through the licensing process of getting the new license for this location, um, part of the delay, because it took us a long time, mm-hmm. I mean, oh, Norm, nice. New York takes yeah. always takes a long time. <laughs> But especially so during COVID. Mm-hmm. Um, but it took a little bit longer than it even would have because of the fact that we were switching to this new license that would allow us that flexibility for future growth because we didn't want to have to, you know, if we got to that point, we wanted to be able to find something and like pull a trigger immediately on it, not yeah. wait through, you know, an entire giant mountain of red tape before we could mm-hmm. actually like go into some place. So we specifically did that with the sort of expansion in the future kind of in mind. Yeah. It's, it's, I mean, it's nice that you guys did it that way because then now you don't have to continue to jump through more hoops when you want to try to expand more and more. Exactly. You're already set up for the next step, yeah. you know, whether you're ready for it currently yeah. or not. All the cost has been paid. It's really just go in, open up a door, and throw a bar in it. Yeah. It's, I hate to say it being that simple, but it is. Yeah. Uh, we've really <laughs> marketed ourselves to be able to go into some other locations. Yeah. Specifically, the Buffalo market is just clamoring for our product. Mm-hmm. 
we have bottle shops that literally drive into Rochester just to pick up beer from us because we have no distribution out that way. Right. So it's it's pretty That's interesting. Cool. Yeah. Do you guys self distribute around yes. around town? Very limited yeah. uh, when we can drive around. Yeah. 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 I got I got I got a little van. I get my van. You know, I drive around. You look uh, like a guy that can drive a van. I do. It's all <laughs> white. You get you get all white. Those little bubble window vans. No, yeah. there's no window though. It sucks. Oh, so you can put a bubble window yeah. in it though. But uh, big... no logo yet too. So it's all white. It really looks kind of weird. Really crazy. Yeah. Really yeah. But like, you know, and then I pop out of the bag with beer and everyone's stay away from creepy white vans with Chad driving. Yeah. So um, can I try some beer? So how many beers no. do you have in, in total? I mean, so labels, we've got 50. 54-ish, somewhere around there, in terms of like pre-done labels that we can just brew the beer, throw right. the label in the can, yeah. and be done with it. In terms of brew, beers that we have ever brewed, I think we're up to 250 or so. Oh, wow. I mean, a lot of that's all yeah. small batch stuff right. that we've done once or twice, yeah. like yeah. experimental batches. In terms of like stuff that we've actually gone through, put the effort in to make, you know, to get an actual label mm-hmm. for, to like actually prove out the recipe and, you know, batch it up to a, yeah. to a canning level size, we've got, you know, somewhere north of 50, yeah. so. That's one of the things, with Rochester's market now, with what, specifically beer, it's very fickle. You have to keep changing things like yeah. that. Mm-hmm. You always have to keep doing different things, yeah. because as good as this beer is, I got all, in all a bunch of cases, I'm gonna sell through that in like a week, maybe less, but if I made that again in a month, now it's going to take me maybe a month to sell. Right. Right, right. You constantly have to keep doing yeah. different stuff. Well, we were just talking earlier before the show too that you know Rochester or the Greater Rochester area is one of the most saturated markets yeah. around for you know breweries um, and so, still expanding you know, though. That's right. just so crazy. Yeah. The, you know the market is sustainable. Mm-hmm. It's been shown like if you can bring a good product, you're going to sustain. Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, it says a lot too about you guys that you're continuing to have success yep. in such a saturated market. You know yeah. what I mean? So you know that's like a pat on the back every single day without anybody even you know actually saying you know yeah. hey, good job guys. You know what I mean? <laughs> if you're continuing to sell and continuing to thrive in a business that's as saturated as the beer industry is in this area, then you know what I mean. That's that's a kudos to you. This is the right first there. time that I've tried your beer, actually. Yeah. And mm-hmm. so I tasted a couple other ones and they're delicious. Yeah. You got the uh, the original batch of our East West rum. Yeah. This is the first time we've actually made this beer in almost what four and a half years. Four and a half years, yeah. So we really? it's, yeah, we haven't even made that, so it's kinda nice to go back to our roots and uh, this is the whole line we do uh, or it's basically, you know, based on a round of a fight. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And each round you will look at our cans, it gets a little bit more beat up. And finally Eric and I came to the like, Hey guys, you know, we're getting towards the end. Do you mind if maybe he throws a punch back or <laughs> something of that nature? And uh, sure enough, that's the idea they went through. And, and uh, you know, we are currently this year going to do a batch of this every month. So we're going to go over to an entire series oh, for this cool. entire year at one a month. Cool. So this one just came out. Two's coming out in a couple of weeks. Uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. nice. Yeah, we're that's cool. To that. I like stuff that has. You know, like that's you know, like that story in it, or you know what I mean. Like you can yeah. see the different games yeah. or the progression. Yeah, and of you can the see the poster rounds. too up there. It's nice. just great artwork. Uh, that's the other part. We're really lucky in that we have a local tattoo artist named Dylan Weeks. He works at Love Hate Tattoo. Oh yeah. And this he guy, did. yeah, this he guy does all, is, does all of our work. That's awesome. Um, he's currently building, uh, finishing a mural that's going to take up this entire wall. Oh, us. super yeah. cool. So yeah, that dude's amazing. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, we're super lucky to have him involved. Uh, so. You know, he's not cheap, I'll say that, but he's worth every penny, I'll right. say that. Well, the good ones are never cheap. <laughs> no, yeah. so. no, but he's very, very good. Well, that's cool. I like that you, you know, you keep it local with that. You yep. know what I mean? You got a local artist doing local stuff. Um, you know, that's I mean, it's best. definitely the trend now, you know what I mean? To keep it local and keep it like it's going. Um, you know, we, our friends um, own and operate um, Three Heads. Yep. Um, and, you know, we've known them for a long time. They're the same. I think they have like a, a local... Um, School teacher, yep. art teacher that does that does you know most of their stuff too, which I love that every you know everybody just keeps it yep. just keeps it tight and That's keeps the it best. Yep. So um, on that note, how was the local support with um, business and people around the yeah. Rochester area? Amazing. Yeah. I mean, we have you know one of the best liquor stores right next to our Shooters Liquor that you know has been around here for seventy five years. <laughs> Forever. And, and the moment I came <laughs> here and got we came here, they were like, hey. Welcome to the neighborhood. What can we do? If you need anything? Blah blah blah. Yeah. You know, and yep. just been just been great. Magnolia is across the street. That you know, you can order food. They'll bring it over here to you. Mm-hmm. You know, same with Chiano's Pizza. If you want a slice, they'll bring it over to you. It's just it's been a nice overall community. Yes, yeah, absolutely. And that's the thing about Park Ave. Is Park Ave is loaded with 
um, independent business owners. You know? Yeah. So mm-hmm. great area to be in. And, you know, the summer, I mean, so this is your, is this your first year open here? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, so we've been here, what? Since May, we opened up. So yep. this last May, we opened up. We got through the vast majority of this past summer. Then fall, this is our first winter officially here. Yeah. And then this is going to be our first early spring here as well. Okay. And then going back into the summertime. So, right. so the summertime is going to be amazing. For you yeah. Well, yeah. It already was last year. <laughs> it already was last year. Yeah, we got some big plans. I got some music lined up for some live acts this summer. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep, yep. Uh, like you were talking with Three Heads. I got those guys over there that mm-hmm. are just... Being again part of the community, you know, yeah. reach out and they say, "Hey, you know, we got a bunch of guys we could definitely put in the back there." So we're gonna do some acoustic shows. We're gonna do some stuff for Park Ave Fest. It's mm-hmm. gonna be a lot of fun. Yeah, yeah, we're gonna actually make a beer specifically for Park Ave. Fest. I was gonna nice. say, yep. you almost have to. Yeah, yeah. you know, yeah, yeah. we're working on it. Yeah. yeah. So I mean, you guys the only tap room on yep. Park yes. Ave. We are yeah. the first and only brewery on Town Park Ave. Nice. Wow. Yeah. You got a bunch over towards like University area. Yeah, uh, yep. yeah. I knew there was some over there, but I was just trying to go up and down the street and think if there was any yeah, just us. anything right here yeah. on Park Ave. I used to live just around the corner um, for a while, and then uh, my wife works literally a block down at Rome. Uh, right, cafe another, right down the street. Another local so, yeah. Yeah, business. Yeah, I don't know if you guys know Drew or not. Um, he's got two restaurants actually down the street here. He's you got talk um, to him. I did talk to yeah, him. Yeah, he's got Rome Cafe, and then yep. um, they actually just did the soft opening for their brand new place, which is right across the street from Rome. Uh, the old Paco's. Uh, mm-hmm. It's oh, called the Classic now. Nice. Okay. Um, so yeah, they just did their soft opening on Thursday. So, but yeah, little little more upscale there, and then Rome is kind of like a little bistro. Oh, they had great food. Had multiple cool. times. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, great food. Yeah, yeah. So he's a he's a cool local, another little you know local guy in Park Ave. Yeah. Reminds me a lot of you guys too. So when summer comes up, are you guys going to partake in all the festivals that go on? Because Rochester has a festival every weekend. Yes, it's one of the greatest things. We are actually part of the New York State Brewers Association as well. Oh. So we are invited often to different events all over the state. Mm. Um, last year we were able to partake in, I think it was four different ones. Yeah, there wasn't much. It wasn't much, yeah. but we were yeah, able to drink like a could. girl. Uh, was one of the most big out in Canada, or excuse me, Pen Yan. Uh, that was a wonderful event run, mm-hmm. run by, and I'm blanking on her name. Uh, Kelly. Uh, Kelly. Kelly's the first It's called Drink Like a Girl. Look into them. They're really good people. Nice. Uh, but it was a you know 5K <laughs> event, huge drinking event, tasting all day, live music. Um, but yeah, there's probably, I'd say at least half a dozen events I know of already this yeah, summer yeah. that we're going to be a part of. It's too bad I'm not still. Uh, it's too bad Quimby's isn't still open because we could have done that competition. Uh, yeah, at, uh, Love and absolutely. Cups. We could have partnered up on that one. That's all right. That's all right. We'll talk to Joe. Maybe we'll work something out at the other. Oh place. yeah, with Churchville. Yeah, yeah, yeah there you go. There. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. So you know, you know Leslie and them would let us. Uh, yeah, like, Leslie loves me. Us, uh, us and Iron Tub. <laughs> <We're in. laughs> Leslie loves me. So We're in. absolutely. We're in. Yeah. So are you going to partake in any more competitions? Yeah, I mean, they come up. Yeah, or we just. Uh, we, I ju- we just put in an application for the um, New York State Brewers Association, like official New York State competition. Yeah. So um, that we weren't able to do last year because we weren't part of the Brewers Association. Oh, okay. But we are now, so we were able to, you know, able to put our application forward for that. Um, and then other than that, we're doing this Buffalo Beer Geeks one again this year. Um, that's going to be end of February. Um, it's a little bit different this year. It's gone back to the way they normally did it. Um, which is they assign you like three or four of their like, group members. It's basically a Facebook beer group, essentially. Oh, okay, okay. Um, but it's it, so like if you know the Flower City Brewers Association here in town, mm-hmm. it's like Buffalo's version of that. So they've okay. got like, uh, you know, a couple thousand members and they basically, anybody that buys a ticket to the event, they divvy them up to all the participating breweries and the members collaborate with the brewery to actually help come up with cool. a beer idea. Oh, that's cool. Um, and then, you know, they're participating in the process and all that kind of stuff. And then the festival itself, everybody brings the beer, all the people that got tickets show up, taste everybody's beer, vote on their favorite kind of thing. So. Nice. Super cool. I love that you guys want I got to go this. I love that you want a Buffalo competition <laughs> from Rochester. You know what I mean? So, so I'll, even, I'll run up you on that one. The funny part about last year was there was, I want to say like 26 to 30 breweries mm-hmm. involved, you know, basically mostly Buffalo, some Rochester, some, you know, Finger Lakes. The top four in the competition were all Rochester. <laughs> so it's us, uh, Fifth Frame, Swift Water, and Rising Storm. Suck in Buffalo. Yeah. Oh, Swift Water? Swift, Swift Water was up in there too. So that, um, I can't remember the name of that competition that they do at, at Three Heads with the food and the beer. Or not oh. at Three Heads, at Love and Cup. 
uh, uh, yeah, whatever. Hometown Throwdown. That's it. That's it. Hometown <laughs> Throwdown. So first time that uh, Quimby's was ever in that competition, we were paired with Swiftwater. Mm-hmm. Um, so that was fun. It's not bad night. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh, that's right. That's that was your night. Yeah, that was my night. <laughs> I, thought, I thought you were with us when we were night. with. Um, <laughs> I thought you were with us the next year. You were with Swift. You were on the Swift yeah, Water team. Swift water well, for like twelve minutes, you were on the Swift yep, Water team. About that time. Yeah. Chad got. Yeah. yeah. That was a fun that was a trip. Great day. Boy. Yeah. <laughs> Chad had a couple of beers and a couple of shots, and then he worked with us for like twelve minutes, and then he, and he <laughs> disappeared. We never, we never saw him again for the whole rest of the night, and he was gone. He was gone. We never saw what him again. What happened to Chad? He was supposed so, to help work. <laughs> so, so I'm half in the bag, like two and a half hours later, I'm about a three heads ten. <laughs> Sounds about Benzo. right. Yeah. Sounds about right. Hilarious. That was that was funny. So, um, with all the other breweries in Rochester, <laughs> are you? Do you sample their beers as well? Oh, are you yeah. like talk to them? And do you guys like you know? So I came and originally. So I was born and raised here in Rochester, out yeah. in Hilton, um, and for a number of years, I actually moved out to Cleveland and worked at Platform Brewing out there. Um, <laughs> and so I. St- actually started my brewery throughout in Cleveland yeah. and then eventually moved back to Rochester. Um, Rochester's beer scene is unique in a way that I don't think people really realize mm-hmm. until you've gone elsewhere and then come back. This is by far the most friendly and collaborative beer market that I've ever seen in my entire life. Yeah. You know, everybody's friends with everybody. You know, I we could if I was having an issue over at the brewery, I could call up Andy over at Swiftwater and he would, you know, come right. over in five minutes and help me with something. Yeah, nice. That's uh-huh. awesome. You know, that's yeah. that's the kind of market we have here and that's not the case most places. I mean out in platform out at platform in Cleveland, like, you know, we had there was kind of the big three out there. It was like platform, Great Lakes and Fat Heads were kind of like the, the top of the market and then yeah. there was a bunch of small guys underneath us. Nobody worked with anybody. Like, you never saw anybody collaborating, like, in town collaborations. Right. right. It was just you know, a straight competition. It, well, yeah. it's, it was a straight competition. And honestly, I think the difference between Rochester and then most other places is Jenny. Because I yeah. think realistically, what happens is when somebody opens up a craft brewery here in Rochester, the, the common thought process amongst everybody is like, okay, well, we're never going to be Jenny. So let's just do our own thing and yeah, be happy yeah. with it. We have that clear market leader that's already established. There's no jockeying for that that position. Right, right, that's yeah. already set. So, right. Yep. You know, at platform, it was we were constantly competing to try to be the market leader. And here, everybody's just like, "Well, Jenny's going to do their thing. Yeah, we're just going to do our thing. Yeah. And have a good time." Yeah. Yeah. Nobody's trying to be Jenny. Exactly. So, and yeah. the great thing about Jenny is that as big as they are, and as, as I mean, as much as they do for I mean, what are they, the fifth largest yeah. in the world now? Yeah. Yeah. Pretty. Big. I can go over there with a beer and a floor pack and say, hey man, can you check this beer for maybe a contaminant or some concern that we may have? And my payment is that floor pack. You know, like, all their and they just take care of it. They'll take care of it. They have a beautiful lab over there and they're just there to help out all the local That's owners. awesome. See, hey, it's well, awesome that well, that big of a place, exactly. you know what I mean, you know, will help out, you know. Yeah. A little They're like, hey, you got a beer brewery. for the payment? You sure do. Here yeah, you here you go. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, we're always tasting different places. You got to. Oh, yeah. You know, that's the only way you challenge yourself. Mm-hmm. You know, all of a sudden <clears throat> something comes up and, you know, they may take a recipe that we, we've made and do something different with it. Yeah. And we're like, okay, we got to up our game there. We got to do this, you know. <laughs> it's like a it's friendly all, competition. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Always, always, always. And I think that's why um, the beer um, community is so successful here because everyone's friendly everyone helps out so you know it's hard not to you know like the industry you know? mm-hmm. yeah i mean for myself i started down the path when I, I i came back to rochester about 12 years ago and i love beer in fact it was <laughs> it was this guy Great here cool. and, and a guy named uh fergie who when i walked in it was like here try this here try this here try this and all of a sudden it was like oh my gosh i got all these crazy beers yeah. Um, and it quickly became more about the people. Um, the people in this industry are just amazing. Yeah. So that's what it's actually become about. Is that for us, it's it's that we can be a part of an amazing yeah, team coming. in Rochester. Yeah. That's the... Um, yeah. No, they don't. So, um, so I read something um, online about the new place. Um, it says the new place is gorgeous and the team at Iron Tug will likely outgrow it again in no time. I am excited to spend summer days on the patio and thrilled to finally have great beer on Park Ave. Which is going to be... Yeah, you know, and like we were just talking about too, you know, now being the only tap room on Park Ave, 
you know, that's 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 huge for you guys. And then plus, you were telling us earlier before the show that well, one there's there's a patio out back. Yeah, right? we have an entire you know six foot privacy fence, uh, heated tent right now, but the whole space out there will probably hold I'd say a good sixty to seventy people. Mm. Uh, we're gonna decorate it nicely for the summer. It's gonna be a great spot. We're gonna have some live music, like I said. Yeah, uh, nice. just nothing crazy, something simple. Acoustic, but it's gonna right? be a, yep. It's gonna be a nice little you know. Vibe, you're going to be able to come, have a great beer, yep. have a, you know an experience with some good people, walk down the street, get to know your different neighbors. And you know what I like too? Summer. What I'm thinking about on Park Ave too is I like the fact that you guys have it out back behind the building. Mm -hmm. One because there's way less restrictions than when you're on the street. Because yep. I know how I know how finicky Park Ave is about. Mm -hmm. I mean, pretty much everything. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, but as far as large size patios, I mean. Half pint, I think their outside is like three times as big as their inside, which really isn't saying a whole lot. Um, but there's not a whole lot of large patio areas on Park Ave. Yeah, you know what I mean? Not. So you guys might have, you know, one of the largest, the largest. if not the largest. Yeah. Space All said and done, we'll have this. For patio. I'd say this summer, uh, if we do get the outdoor <clears throat> patio done out front as well, we'll have, I'd say, anywhere between 100 to 120 outdoor seating. Nice. Which awesome. no one has that. Um, yeah. No one. Yeah. No, not not even close to that yeah. big. And we are going to have a couple of options too. So, like you said, in the back, you know, it's going to be a lot more, you know, less restrictive back there. Right. Essentially, it's private property back yeah. there. Yeah. You can kind yeah. of hang out and do what you want. Yeah. You can mosey around um, and. Yeah. It's a yeah. little more private back there. Um, we do have sidewalk tables that we put out in the summertime. So if you do want to sit out on the sidewalk, mm -hmm. people watch, which yeah, yeah, right. the Park Ave is endless yeah. entertainment. Oh man, that's <laughs> you, that's worth its weight. Yes, it is. So, <laughs> let me tell you. Yeah. I like that. Yeah. But yeah, we'll have that option as well. So, you know, if you want to sit out and people watch and enjoy the sunshine out there, you can. We're going to have that back area that's a little bit, you know, a little bit tucked away, but, you know, still yeah. outside, still enjoying the weather. So, yeah. you'll have that's options. Awesome. And the one that's great awesome. thing about having the patio and you say and having like the live music mm -hmm. is Rochester has so many great um, musicians. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. From all genres oh, yeah. Yeah, of music. So, it could be, I mean. Oh, I got some ideas. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. anything you want, there's yep. a musician for it yep. in Rochester. Yep. Yeah, and, and the, the the personal tastes on Park Ave is so eclectic that, you know yeah. what I mean? You you yeah. know, if you have one guy that's playing this this night, then you'll draw this crowd. And then, you know, you got exactly. a guy doing something else this night, and it's a totally different crowd that comes in. You know what I mean? You're, yeah. you're able to expose yourself to so many different markets being in this one, yep. you know, location that, you know, I, I think that it's, I'm super stoked for you guys. It's Thank you for sure. sure. And you never know, I might get up there with the bongo. <laughs> you're more than welcome. Uh, 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 if, if we can do an amateur night. <laughs> <laughs> Open mic night. Um, if, if an artist was interested in getting in touch with you guys, what's the best way to do so? Um, they can just email me, honestly, the best way, or call the tap room here. But uh, yeah, chat at irontugbrewing.com. Nice. That'd be the easiest way to go. Yeah, we'll definitely put your guys' social links, um, awesome. and then you know your contact information uh, oh, in the description yeah. down below, yeah. for sure. Yeah. Beautiful. For sure. Yeah, and we'll post it you know, on our social media pages you know, probably for most awesome. people. So we'll push you yeah. on some. Thank you. Definitely. Anything else? Um, you know, I know you guys got to get open soon. Yeah. Um, you know, we don't want to keep you for too long. But anything else you guys want to want to add to? We could keep talking. I know. <laughs> you trust me. <laughs> so when, when we first started, when we first started this show, uh, almost two years ago, me and Matt were like, you know, if we can do 15 minutes, you know, what I mean, if we could do a show for about 15 minutes, that'd be great. Our first show was like 12 minutes long. You know what I mean? Felt like and then, two hours. you know, after about a season. You know, now we're like struggling to keep ourselves at like 40, 45 minutes. You know what I mean? Like we're really, we try really hard not to push ourselves to like an hour. Yeah. But we always end up going off on these like tangents terrible stuff. tangents and going down these freaking rabbit holes, man. And then like we forget, you know, we're talking about, you know, like it's Susan B. Anthony's birthday. You know what I mean? And all of a sudden we're, you know, watching, you know, talking about cat videos that we watched in outer space or something. Like it's just like, what, how did we get here? But um, yes, Iron Tug, great place. I love it. I'm glad that everything is going well, and it's gonna get better and better for you guys, of course. Thank yep. You. Um, and hopefully we can come back and do another show Absolutely. during the summer or yeah. something. Yeah, or... do something out back. Yeah, oh. that'd be super cool. Yeah, that'd be super cool. But don't forget, guys, to check these guys out both on social media and down here on Park Ave. Come down, have a beer, hang out. 
Um, and then, you know, check and tell you everything you need to know about beer. Because um, you won't do anything else. <laughs> but anyways, guys, don't forget to like and subscribe to both the channels on Facebook and YouTube at One Drink Podcast. Hit that sub button. Click on the bell notification to be the first ones notified when our new episodes hit. Yes. And all we ask is if you share with one friend. That's it. Share our page. Share their page. page. For sure. Or better yet, just come down and have a beer. Yes. <laughs> and we will see you down here at some point because we'll be frequently coming back, obviously. <laughs> I yep. appreciate that. Anyways, guys, I'll say Iron Tug. Cheers. See you, guys.